in this special learning episode of watching a regular human boy explain things for normal people. I am going to explain what it means when someone says you need to tune your antenna. And I am going to explain it in a way that number one, you will understand and number two, will not bore you to death. If however you do find that you have become bored to death, please ask a loved one to drag your carcass away from the keyboard and tell them to leave a comment to let me know that I have failed. Now before I get into the splaining part, allow me to be clear on what this video is and is not. Because if I am not clear, some people will leave comments complaining that they came here expecting to see one thing, but I delivered another thing. This is not a how to video. This is a what is video and the difference between those two types of videos for those of you that have not yet figured it out is a how to video explains how to do something. For example, how to tune an antenna, whereas a what is video explains what is something in our case, what is antenna tuning? If you came here looking to learn how to tune an antenna, or if you came here looking to see the pretty girl on the thumbnail, then please go away. Antenna tuning is matching the length of your antenna to the frequency which you plan to transmit on. Many people call this antenna matching. Tuning and matching are pretty much the same thing because for an antenna to work optimally, the length of the antenna must be tuned or matched to the frequency that you will be transmitting on as previously mentioned. And the tuning or matching part is simply adjusting the length of the antenna to match the frequency range that you will be transmitting on. In the GMRS world, this is usually done by cutting or trimming the antenna to the proper length. In the CB world, this can be done by cutting the antenna or adjusting a set screw on the antenna to make it longer or shorter, bringing it to the proper length. In the ham world, anytime I say anything about ham radio or the ham world, some people leave comments on my videos saying that I am not qualified to even say the word ham. Ham because I don't have a ham radio license. Some radio Karens even leave comments on my videos saying that I should not be allowed to even talk about GMRS because I don't have a ham radio license. And the thing about these people is that they're idiots. Antenna tuning can be complicated, but all you really need to remember is that if the length of the antenna is not correct, the antenna will not work as well as it could. It will not work optimally. And in GMRS frequencies, the difference between an antenna that works very well and poorly can be as little as one inch. And the difference between an antenna working okay and working perfectly can be as little as one millimeter. Most antennas can be tuned only to one frequency. And the further away from that frequency you transmit, the less tuned that antenna will be, or the higher SWR it will have. And that means that less RF electricities will be squirting out of the end of the antenna. By the way, SWR or standing wave ratio is one way to measure how well tuned your antenna is. A perfect SWR would be one to one. That would mean that 100% of the RF electricities are squirting out of the end of your antenna. It is actually rare to get a perfect one to one SWR. A good SWR would be 1.1 to one up to around two to one. An SWR of two to three to one is not so good. And anything over an SWR of three to one means you could do better. And if you have an SWR of five to one or 10 to one or 20 to one, that means you really screwed something up. Now, as some people will point out, using an SWR meter is not the only way. It's probably not even the best way to measure how well your antenna is tuned. But for most normal person, 
using a CB or GMRS radio, using an SWR is good enough. So when you see those 10 paragraph long comments online from people saying that you must use an antenna analyzer or a VNA to properly adjust and match and tune and measure your antenna, just ignore them. Everybody else does. One very important thing to be aware of with SWR meters is that most SWR meters, especially the lower cost ones that normal people like you and I have, cannot be used for both CB and GMRS. So make sure you purchase the proper one for your SWR adventures. It is also important to note that getting an accurate SWR reading on a handheld walkie-talkie antenna is exceedingly difficult. Everything I'm talking about in this video is for mobile antennas or base station antennas. For HT or walkie-talkie antennas, I don't even bother anymore. Now, of course, the big question is, what will happen if you don't bother to tune your antenna? Now, before I say anything else, allow me to be very clear. Because if I am not very, very, very clear, some people We'll go around saying that I tell everyone that you should not tune your antenna or that you don't even need to bother checking the SWR when installing a new antenna. I am not saying that and to the contrary of what some people have posted online, I have never said that. If you are installing an antenna, even if the antenna says it is pre-tuned, you should always check the SWR after you install it. Because a high SWR can be caused by other things, things other than the antenna being out of tune, such as a bad ground plane, a shorted out cable, an ungrounded antenna mount, and none of those things are good. So it is always a good idea to test your antenna after you install it with an SWR meter to make sure that you didn't screw up the installation. Because as previously mentioned, a high SWR means that not all of those RF electricities are able to squirt out of your antenna. And all of those RF electricities that are not able to squirt out of your antenna go back down through the wire and end up inside of your radio. And that creates heat inside the guts of your radio. And we all know that heat and guts are not a good combination. So what have we learned so far? One, tuning the antenna is simply the act of making sure that it is the correct length for the range of frequencies that you will be transmitting on. And two, Heat and guts are not a good combination. Now, when doing your research about tuning antennas and SWR, surely you have come across some of the experts telling us that when measuring your SWR, you must, must, must check the SWR in an open field away from any obstructions, buildings, houses, telephone poles, electric wires. You must, must do it away from anything. And failure to do this will result in a wrong SWR reading. That is bullshit. My friend, I have tuned many an antenna and I have taken the time to check and compare SWR readings when inside my garage, when right outside the garage next to my house in the driveway, and when in an actual open field away from everything, and I have seen no measurable or noticeable difference in the SWR readings in any of those three places. Now, maybe in theory, in a book, it's written down somewhere saying that it's a good idea to be away from all obstructions. And if you are some kind of weirdo that requires absolute perfect precision in your SWR testing adventures, then sure, go ahead and do it in an open field. But for the rest of us normal people, doing it in your driveway is good enough. So to recap, antenna tuning is simply the matching of the length of your antenna to the correct frequencies. It's always a good idea to test the SWR using an SWR meter after you install it to make sure you didn't screw it up. Guts and heat do not mix and you do not need to be in an open field to test or measure your SWR. And that my friend is what antenna tuning is.